Express Tire Center, Aces Bail Bonds, Miranda and Sons Automotive, Bridgeport Auto Glass, Ramirez Spanish Restaurant, Haas Funeral Home. <laughs> What's up, you guys? Welcome to Live with Jason Rodriguez. We are here broadcasting from the Super Elite Entertainment Studio in the great city of Bridgeport, Connecticut. Really excited tonight because I have a very, very special guest here in the studio with me who's going to be sitting on the hot seat momentarily. I have state representative from the 130th district of the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut, Mr. Antonio Felipe, who is here in the studio with me tonight. And uh, we're going to be chopping it up. We're going to have a good time. Antonio Felipe is on the campaign trail and he is running for the current seat that he is currently uh, occupying. And um, if you don't know, Antonio Felipe is going up against Mr. Kelvin Ayala, who is also from the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut. So we got a lot to talk about, a lot of current affairs, a lot of issues that are taking place in the city. And uh, Antonio Felipe is here to break it all down tonight. So if you're listening to us on our podcast, whether Anchor, Spotify, or Apple Podcasts, welcome to the show tonight. If you need new wheels and tires, want to remind you that Perez Tire Center is located right there at 72 Nolton Street in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Aces Bell Bond. Quick response 24-7, Yasmin Khan. Contact them if you need their assistance. Evolution Sports Bar and Cafe, located in the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut. Thursdays, they have karaoke night. Fridays, um, ladies night. Saturdays, Fusion Day. And Sundays, El Dia de Rumba. Also, Miranda and Sons Automotive. If you need your vehicle repaired, contact Louis Miranda at Miranda and Sons. Spark City Smoke and Vape Shop, which is located right here in the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut, featuring the best cigars you could possibly find in the city. If you need that cigar or that vaping product, visit Spark City Smoke and Vape Shop. Also, Ramirez Spanish Restaurant, located at 1234 East Main Street in Bridgeport, Connecticut, specializing in churrasco and seafood. Need new glass on your vehicle? Visit BridgeportAutoGlassShop.com. Another thing we want to do is give a big shout out and a big thank you to all the essential workers who are out there working extremely hard on our behalf. As we know, we are being affected by COVID-19. The battle is not over. Uh, the virus is still out there impacting lives and impacting our communities. As you know, the hospital rate has dropped, but the infection rate is still going up. So. Make sure that you're protecting yourself, utilizing your mask, your hand sanitizer, and whatever other measures that have been mandated by the government, especially social distancing. So we're going to take a quick commercial break. But before I do, I want to encourage you to please share this live broadcast into your timeline so that other people can join in and be a part of what we have going on here tonight. We're going to take a quick commercial break. But when I come back, I have state representative from the 130th district of the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut, Mr. Antonio Felipe sitting on what I call the hot seat right here in the Super Elite Entertainment Studio. We'll be right back momentarily, guys. Don't go anywhere. Evolution Sport Bar Cafe, el mejor ambiente de Bridgeport, Connecticut, presenta Jueves de Karaoke y Happy Hour. Estoy enamorado de una mala. Viernes de Ladies Night, donde las damas entran gratis la noche entera. ¡Qué Sábado de Fusion Day. Y los domingos son de rumba. Con especial toda la noche. Todos los días mezclando en vivo Los DJ más duros Con los mejores especiales en bebida Y aperitivos Muévete al lugar donde se vive la noche Evolution Sport Bar Café 1279 North Avenue, Bristol, Connecticut Reservas al 203-908-1588 Evolution Sport Bar Café El mejor ambiente Now. 
All right, you guys, and welcome back to Live with Jason Rodriguez. We're broadcasting from the greatest city in the state of Connecticut. And uh, tonight I have Mr. Antonio Felipe from the 130th District of the City of Bridgeport, Connecticut. He is here on the hot seat tonight. I'm really excited to have Antonio Felipe here in the studio with me because he's on the campaign trail. And he is going up against a good fight with Kelvin Ayala, who is also from the City of Bridgeport, Connecticut. And without further ado, I present to you, my viewing audience, Mr. Antonio Felipe. How you doing, brother? Good, good. I'm glad to be here. Absolutely. Uh, you know, have this Facebook Live feed and, and you know on twitch everywhere else mm -hmm. right here in the city of bridgeport right here downtown in the district you know you're putting on a really good show i know that that hundreds of people are watching mm. a lot of people watch your praying with music on thursdays uh it's just a great platform to have and it's right here in the center of our city so i want to commend you on that thank you thank you very much antonio and i know that if anyone supports our platform and our network is definitely you yeah. especially this being your district I believe it is your district, yes, right? Yes, it is. All right, the 130th district. And uh, you, Chris Rosario, Dennis Bradley, uh, you know, all of those big big boys that are out there in the Senate, up there in the Capitol, working yeah. extremely hard on our behalf. You're the voice for the people who can't speak for themselves. And you're my voice as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I truly appreciate you and all the, you know, the, the other guys who are out there constantly uh, showing your support to what I do here in downtown Bridgeport. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and before we get started, if I could take a point of uh, personal privilege, mm -hmm. I just want to talk about uh, something that really hit my heart today. Some uh, Something I heard about uh, actually very recently before I got to the studio, but uh, I just want to say rest in peace to Desiree Jordan Little. She is a young lady who I've met uh, only a handful of times, but when I had spoken to her, the joy and the spirit that she gave uh, was something that really, really impacted me. It left a long, a long lasting impact. And I just want to, you know, put my deepest condolences out to her family. And I know they have a GoFundMe page out. It was paused the last time I checked, but if somebody could maybe drop that in the comments uh, and leave it out there in case it gets unpaused so you can support that family because uh, that joy and that spirit, those youthful voices are something we really need right now in the current climate. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I truly appreciate your, uh, your, your, uh, the fact that you just presented that information to the viewing audience because the individual was, I mean, teenager, young. Yes. And, um, you know, it's another young life that we just lost right here in our own city. And especially during these tough times that we're going through, yeah. you know, COVID-19, all the protests, all the things that are taking place in our communities. And then something like that happens. You know, yes. it's, it's, it's kind of tough. So we send our prayers out to the family members. Um, and you, I guarantee you that this Thursday night when we have our Praying With Music show, we will definitely be praying for the family. That's great. That's all awesome. right. So. Back to Antonio Felipe. Yes. For you guys who are just tuning in, because I'm starting to see the numbers going up, um, and I know that we have a lot of people watching on Periscope, YouTube, Twitch, and even on our website. So we're on a bunch of different platforms live right now, which is pretty cool. But I just want to welcome each and every one of you who are tuning in right now. And tonight, I'm excited because I have this good man right here seated to my right, I mean to my left, Mr. Antonio Felipe. He is the uh, state representative for the 130th district of the city of Bridgeport. And um, Antonio, You've been at it already for a good year. Yes. So you're bringing one year experience into the battle that you're going up against with Kelvin Ayala. If I should say, rest in peace, Ezekiel Santiago. Yes. Um, you took, you were a, a, a replacement for Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. I mean, you did campaign, you did run, and you, and you came out victorious. Yes. And you were given the honor and the privilege to be able to take that vacant seat he left mm -hmm. behind. So one year on the job. Yeah. So you have on-job experience. Yes. Um, what can we anticipate of you in the next couple of months th throughout your campaign? Uh, well, what you can anticipate is just me making sure that everybody understands that even though it was a year, uh, it was two sessions, and we got a lot of things done for the, for the state of Connecticut, for the people living in the state of Connecticut, mm -hmm. things like a $15 an hour minimum wage, uh, things like stronger minority teacher recruitment, we got African-American and Latino history taught in schools. Uh, and right now, we're fighting to protect education in our budget. Uh, we're making sure that while we're going through this pandemic, which, you know, it has been my honor and my privilege to serve during a pandemic because it's something that doesn't happen very often. It's mm -hmm. something that nobody has ever been able to see. But it really uh, just showed a lot of the disparities in our community. The disparities I already knew were there, mm -hmm. but it put a spotlight on them and it allowed us to really do some creative things in terms of getting people food, uh, in terms of making sure that people got their education. Uh, you know, when kids were getting their lunch at school, we were handing out books, mm -hmm. making sure that they had a way to, to really, you know, 
find find their education in other ways rather than just being on the computer for six, seven, eight hours a day. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really been humbling, but I've been proud to have been able they deserve. And now we're fighting for racial justice. We talk about, mm -hmm. you know, the George Floyd killing or even Jason Negron uh, years ago. But this has been going on for much longer than I've been alive, mm -hmm. uh, much longer than my father has been alive. This has just been a con consistent battle and being the youngest member of color in the entire legislature, I think it makes me feel uh, you know, disgusted when I see certain things like we saw on Elmwood Avenue uh, this week where we had a mannequin hanging out of a tree. Absolutely, and, absolutely, and, and, and actually, yeah. um, I have a, a picture of that yes. that I want to put up on the screen right now so that people can see what you're talking about. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, mannequin, well, if I should say a black colored mannequin yes. hanging off of a tree. Very inappropriate, especially during a time of racial you know, disparity that we're going through right now. Um, someone has the audacity to, to do such a thing. Yes. And especially right here in Bridgeport. Come on, man. You know? Um, that, that mannequin was actually positioned on Elmwood Ave, which is right down the street from where I grew up on Laurel Avenue. Mm. And to think that that neighborhood uh, would have such a symbol of hate mm. is something that really hurt my heart. It made me feel, uh, you know, very disgusted with, with whatever member of the community had, had the gall to do that. Mm. Um, but also, I walked that area on Sunday. Uh, so on Friday, I got the news and I got it taken down by public facilities. On Sunday, I decided to walk the neighborhood and ask, and ask the neighbors about it and try to figure out what was going on because I feel like we need to pursue uh, a, an investigation of a hate crime for this. Absolutely. But as we do that, you got you to gotta find out from the community what they're thinking, you know, what they saw. And I, I learned that a business owner who also owns a business in my district on East Main Street, um, he lives in that house. Uh, African American man, you know, taking care of his son and his daughter in the house. His son, uh, his son is suffering from asthma as well, which a lot of our people in our community suffer from. And you know, to to think that a stand up businessman like that, just trying to raise his son and his daughter, mm. would have to come out of his of his home and see that in a tree, it's it's despicable. And it's just it's just that something that shows the disparities that we've been dealing with, mm -hmm. and that's why we need to go back for a special session to deal with not only police brutality, but racial equity in all forms. Absolutely. So with everything else that's going on, and since we're on that subject, um, dealing with, with racial disparity, um, as you know, we just went through the situation. Forget about COVID-19 for the moment. Yep. We went through something just as big, George Floyd. Yes. All the protesting. We have people who are protesting the right way, and then people who have been protesting the wrong way, the looters. Yeah. So, I mean, here in our city of Bridgeport alone, um, what do you think the response has been from the community in regards to what's been taking place? For example, the protesters, have they been positive? Have we had to deal with, with the type of you know, looters that have been causing dis disruption and, and violence. I mean, how, how has it been here in the city so far? I think the looters are a national thing. Mm -hmm. um, and they've, they've happened in a lot of uh, major cities. But luckily, Bridgeport is one of the places that I'm most proud of. It's been a very youthful movement. It's been a lot of young people raising up their voices. Mm -hmm. uh, the, now, don't get me wrong. The past generations are marching right along with them. Mm -hmm. And I've been marching with them as well, trying to be another one of those young voices as the youngest member of the legislature of color. But it's just been the most prideful thing to see them go out there and and protest and sure people might think they're a little bit disrespectful mm -hmm. but if i can say so when you're not respected by a group of people i don't think that they deserve your respect mm -hmm. as long as we're not being violent as long as people aren't out there you know trying to to destroy people's businesses mm -hmm. or hurt somebody else but if you want to voice your displeasure and be a little bit upset for what's happened to you especially these specific instances all for it. And it's been nonviolent, but it's been loud. People have been hurt. Uh, things like the Christopher Columbus statue. They marched to that statue on Saturday. It was gone yesterday. And, and that was my next question for yeah. you. Because I've seen that you were, you were there present. Mm -hmm. um, when uh, I believe you were there. No, no, no. No, you wasn't. Okay. I was at a, uh, a press conference for the For the Bass school, for the Bassett High School. school. That's where I've seen you. Yeah. Yes. So, but the uh, Christopher Columbus statue. Um, been sitting there for what? The last 50 years? Yeah. Maybe longer yeah. than that. And now it's gone. So I just wanted your response and your take, your point of view in regards to the removal of that statue from Seaside Park right here in Bridgeport, Connecticut. So 
I'm Puerto Rican and Dominican as well as Italian. Mm -hmm. So as a Puerto Rican and Dominican, it's hard to uh, have somebody tell you that somebody who has oppressed your people is going to be a, a fixture in a neighborhood and you know, ha have that symbol of oppression just be sitting there. However, as an Italian, I can tell you that I understand where people are coming from with the symbolism behind that particular statue mm -hmm. and why it was erected. It was erected to symbolize the end of their own oppression in America. However, I think that if something represents uh, something hateful, mm -hmm. you should get rid of it. I think that, that that Columbus statue should not return. However, I do think a session should be made for the Italian American community because that, that oppression that ended for them in America needs to be celebrated as well. Mm. I mean, honestly, and this is, this is my personal opinion, mm -hmm. um, if a new statue is gonna be placed there, if, if they're, they're going to put a replacement there, honestly, I think maybe they, this is me now, mm -hmm. I think maybe they should put someone up there, maybe like Martin Luther King Jr. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's my yeah. opinion. I mean, he's someone that I that I really admire, someone that, um, you know, his lifeline, I just I just love his story, I love his, his enthusiasm, his passion, mm -hmm. and what he's done to change, yeah. um, you know, our world. So, me personally, I think that's who they should put there. Yeah, I think maybe um, one of the uh, one of the Bridgeport leaders of those kind of movements. I think people don't talk about a lot of our history when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe one of those leaders, maybe um, you know, some some of the native uh, Bridgeporters from before Bridgeport was even uh, founded, mm -hmm. something like that, um, or something to to represent the Italian community because I don't think they should not have anything. That's not what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I just think it shouldn't be Christopher Columbus. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. So. We're getting back to the talk mm -hmm. about your campaign. Yes. We know that in the next couple of months. So right now you're going through, if you were a boxer, I would, I would, I would classify it as training camp. Yeah. So you go, well, you've been through training camp, but now you're back in. Mm -hmm. So you're preparing for a big fight against Kevin Ayala. Yes. So if you were a boxer, this is what I would ask that boxer. What do you know about your opponent thus far? Uh, I think that my opponent uh, has really been using what they think is a lack of experience against me or me being young. And in a time like now, where we have all these youthful voices really really speaking out and really stepping up, mm -hmm. I think that I'm exactly what Connecticut needs, I'm exactly what the district needs, I'm what Bridgeport needs. As the youngest member of color in the legislature, I've been in front of issues such as education. Uh, this police, police brutality issue is something that is not, you know, falling on deaf ears when it comes to me. Uh, you know, making sure that people have proper equity and job training. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have come out and really stood on everything that I said I believed in, and I'm going to continue to do that for as long as I'm in the legislature. And right now, the need for youth voices doesn't stop in the streets. Mm. I think it belongs to that legislature as well, and I'm happy to uh, represent that, and I'm excited to fight my way back. So when we look at the city of Bridgeport, what do you think are some of the major issues that need to be addressed by our state representatives there at the Capitol? First and foremost, first and foremost is education. Yesterday, we uh, announced a new Bassett High School. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a state-of-the-art building with an advanced manufacturing component. They're finally, for the first time, going to have athletic fields on their campus. Mm. And they're going to be on the campus with this new merger between uh, Goodwin, Perry University, Sacred Heart University, and University of Bridgeport which will have these kids, they're looking at kids who are going to university and saying, hey, I want to do that with my life. And for, for Bridgeport, that's huge. Our mm -hmm. graduation rates have been low. Our, uh, our kids that go to four-year schools, that's been low as well. Um, so right now, the fight for, for funding education is always on the forefront, and it'll be on the forefront again next year, and making sure that we have good environments for these kids to go to so they understand that there is life after those four years. There's life after Bridgeport. Um, and hopefully they can go find a four-year school or go right there to that, that great university that they're going to have and then bring it right back to Bridgeport so we can be bigger and better than ever. Absolutely. And um, I think it's amazing the location that they pick to uh, put Bassick High School at. Now, my question is, when they do build the new, the new high school, yeah. because UB has an amazing soccer field, yeah. are they getting rid of that? No. That is, that is the field. That they're is the going field. to play on that on that soccer field. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. They're, so they're going to have you know college fields, a field that a team has won a national championship on. Mm -hmm. uh, let me tell you, a couple of years ago, 
the uh, UB girls soccer team won a national championship right on that field, and they're going to be playing on the same field. So, yeah, that's pretty that's, that's pretty awesome. So, some great things are taking place um, here in the city. And um, you know what? You're gonna always you're always gonna have your your negative naysayers mm -hmm. who always have something negative to say. And me personally, I like I like uh, critics and I like naysayers because they're the ones that that uh, place the fuel in the fire, make it burn a little bit yeah. more. You know. So, but yeah, there's some great things that are taking place in the city. I mean, Mayor Joe Gannum and his and his uh, you know the uh, city council man, they're out there working extremely hard. Yeah. And uh, how important is it for you as a state rep? to collaborate with the city council and the mayor and, and to stay in touch with each other? Um, it's critically important. I think mm -hmm. that everything that we do at some, at some level is going to end up getting to uh, the city council or you know, the board of education or the mayor, and they're gonna have to make decisions. Speaking of, uh, when I spoke of special session, mm -hmm. once we go in and we make those changes, it's up to the municipality to make sure that they enact some of them and we're gonna hold them to that. Um, you know, it's, it's really us getting the resources, but just like what happened with Bassick yesterday, where the school buildings community and the Board of Education voted on the, on the location, uh, after we got the, the $90 million, the same, same deal. We're gonna get them resources, we're gonna make sure that it comes down to Bridgeport, and we get as much as we can get, but it's up to that city council and us collaborating with them to understand what our vision collectively as a city is mm -hmm. to, to get those things done. So we, we work hand in hand and we have to. Excellent. You know. As you already know, I'm not a politician, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I don't want to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but when I look at when I look at politicians, um, whether I mean starting from the president all the way down, uh, uh, state senators and 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 you name it. Yeah. When it's campaign season, and I'm just you know just just me speaking. When it's yeah. campaign se season, you know they they get on camera. They're out there campaigning, and they're always saying the right thing, always saying the right words. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes that rubs people the wrong way because people are tired of just hearing this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, and, and, and honestly, I'm, I'm tired of hearing this as well. And I'm, and I'm also tired of seeing um, politicians always present for a photo op. Mm-hmm. So my thing is, I want to see action, just like the people in the community. They want to see action. Forget about photo ops, forget about this. I want to see actions. What's your response to that? Uh, my response is, I'm not going to shy away from a camera when it's there, mm -hmm. but when a camera's not there, I'm not going to stop working either. Mm -hmm. I think the work is critically important. I think when I talked about, or when I, earlier when I talked about COVID, mm -hmm. we were out there, we weren't, we weren't looking for Frank Recchia to follow us around. We weren't looking for a, for a camera, and, and shout out to Frank Recchia, he does some great work. Yep. But we weren't looking for that rub. We were looking to make sure the community got what they needed. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I don't uh, keep track or keep a note and send to the press every time that we help somebody with a uh, unemployment claim or a liaison to a state department. Mm -hmm. That's our job. And, and I'm not here to be a rubber stamp. I'm not here to be somebody who just takes photo ops. I'm here to do the job. And I've been doing it for, for the last year, and I'm gonna continue doing it as long as people uh, allow me to. Absolutely. And uh, my my comments and my statement is not to offend anyone. Yeah. And, you know, it's just me speaking uh, uh, thoughts that people I know have in the community. Yeah. So that's why I'm throwing it out there. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> so when when let's talk about obstacles mm. um, as a state representative, a lot of issues that you deal with, a lot of information you present when you're there at the Capitol in session, whatever the case may be. I don't know all the terminology. Yeah. yeah. But how how difficult is it? to communicate those type of obstacles to to the people that you, you have to speak to there in the Senate? Um, it's not incredibly difficult, especially mm -hmm. when you've built relationships like I've been able to build. The difference is uh, some communities don't look like the community that, that you grow up in or you live in or you serve. And uh, to bring that perspective, you really have to be able to orate it and, and tell people what the story is because mm -hmm. not everybody has that same story. But if you can connect it to, to other communities, that's how, you, that's how you really get something done. Mm -hmm. um, if I come from Bridgeport and I have a Bridgeport specific issue, I try to find, you know, how does that happen in New Haven? How's that happening in Hartford? What have they done in New Jersey? That's the same way in that legislature. Mm. Just trying to figure out, you know, what communities like ours uh, are able to do for themselves, but understanding the obstacles of maybe that community is not dealing with that, but you have to let them see your side because at the end of the day, some of these issues affect all families and all communities. It just might be a lesser percentage of their community than ours. Yeah. So it's, it, has, it has been announced that phase three mm -hmm. has been, basically they stopped. They yeah. stopped phase three. 
um, is being delayed. The reopening is being delayed indefinitely yes. for right now. So, I mean, you as an individual that's a part of the legislation, you're part of what's the, you're part of the decision process. Mm -hmm. You're there with the governor at times. Yeah. Your take in regards to phase three being delayed. I mean, you think that's a good thing or a bad thing? I think that there's ways to look at it on both sides. Mm -hmm. I think that in terms of public health, which is the first thing that we should look at, it's the right way to go. Right now, you're seeing spikes in the South, in Florida, uh, in South Carolina, and North Carolina. I know people who have gone to all three places mm -hmm. over July 4th weekend and come back to Connecticut quietly. Because obviously, you're supposed to quarantine for 14 days, and I hope those of you who have gone are doing so. But if they don't quarantine for those 14 days, they, they have a risk of infecting others. And if that's the case, then um, you know we're going we're gonna to look at a spike here too. So we need to make sure that we're keeping everybody safe. And I understand that there are business owners right now who want to open a little bit more than they have been opening. And they want to make sure that they get everything done that they can mm -hmm. to save their businesses. And we're here with you and we want to make sure that we provide grants as well. Mm -hmm. or, th or if you, know, you need some help on a federal grant that we're helping you through our offices. But um, it's the right way to go for public health to, to slow it down, yeah. at least a little bit. Excellent. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break, all right? Okay. All right. So for you guys that are watching right now, I want to thank you for tuning in tonight. As you can see, I have Mr. State Rep Representative Antonio Felipe from the 130th District. He is here in the studio with me on the hot seat. And I know the seat is hot because I'm sweating myself on, <laughs> on this side. So um, I want to welcome you if you're just tuning in. If you've been watching, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, share this live broadcast into your timeline. We're going to take a quick commercial break. When I come back, we will continue on with... State Rep. Antonio Felipe. We'll be right back momentarily, guys. Welcome to Spark City Smoke and Vape, located at 815 Lafayette Boulevard, Bridgeport, Connecticut. <laughs> All right, you guys, and welcome back to Live with Jason Rodriguez. Again, we're here in the studio, Super Elite Entertainment Studio in the great city of Bridgeport, Connecticut, and I have State Representative Antonio, Antonio, not Montana, but Felipe, <laughs> from the 130th District. He is here with me, and we're going to jump right back, in, back into it. So how are you feeling, Antonio? Good. Yeah? Real good. Having a good time? Absolutely. I want Always this studio. I yeah? I mean, the, the anticipation of walking into the studio is that you feel at home. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. All right, so let's continue on. Campaign trail. Yep. For the people that are watching, uh, you have a big fight coming up. You're going up against Kelvin Ayala, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, I'm, I'm relating politics to boxing. Sure. Because I love the sport. And, you know, Kel Kelvin Ayala, honestly speaking, is a difficult opponent. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I say that is because he doesn't bring experience like you already have. Because you've been, it, been at it for about a, a little over a year now. Yeah. So he don't have that part. But, you know, he, he is educated, he's, he's business savvy, he's, he's a pretty smart guy. Um, he has a lot of good qualities, a lot of good credentials, um, which qualifies him to go up against you. Mm. At the same time, it allows you to fight against him because you have great qualities and credentials yourself. Yes. So going up against an opponent like Kelvin Ayala, I mean, if reelected, mm. let's say if, if reelected, Kelvin was here a couple of weeks ago. He already uh, indicated and explained what his outline, what his plan is if he gets elected. Mm -hmm. So my question to you right now is, if reelected, what will you do differently than what you already have done? And what will you do differently than what Kelvin Ayala is offering the city of Bridgeport? I'm not sure what my opponent is offering the city of Bridgeport, so mm -hmm. I can't speak on what I'll do differently than that. Uh, what I'll do differently than what I'm doing now, I don't think that I, I would try to do much differently other than uh, introduce leg legislation that uh, helps with not only minority teacher recruitment, mm -hmm. but when we talk about, because minority teacher recruitment is already a thing we do, 
but uh, you know, guidance counselors and social workers. I think we need more guidance counselors and social workers of color. Mm-hmm. I think we need folks who uh, are trained in mental health to be in our police departments. Mm-hmm. And I, I'll fight for equity like I've always done. I'll fight for equity in education, making sure that we get the, the funding that we need, making sure that we're looking at it from different angles because I'm somebody who, who is very supportive of all forms of education, meaning that not every kid learns the same way, mm-hmm. but we need to understand that you know we need to have a fuller education for all children and throwing money at the problem isn't the only thing that's going to help mm. it's doing things like we're doing at basic adding an advanced manufacturing component to it making sure that people are ready for the jobs of tomorrow people are ready for a four-year school so education is something going to be super focused on developing our downtown right now our train station is looking the same as it looks since, since the 60s we got to change that got to make sure that our businesses are supported uh, make sure that there are there's walkability downtown. There's entertainment. You know, there's a reason right now that the businesses are struggling, mm-hmm. and the reason that they're struggling is we don't have uh, a lot of housing opportunities, which we are now fixing with downtown North. We have apartments being built. We yep. have a brewery being built. Uh, there's going to be an axe throwing place next to that brewery. There's going to be a lot of things going on, and right now we're building that capacity. There's going to be retail and residential at Steel Point. Mm-hmm. Um, and building that up and making sure that 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 comes to fruition and yeah. people are really coming together to be, you know, entertained in Bridgeport, to spend mm-hmm. a weekend in Bridgeport. And when's the last time that you saw something as beautiful as that dock over on, on Steel Point? Mm-hmm. When Boca? I was, yeah, mm-hmm. at Boca. When I was a kid, mm-hmm. uh, all we had was one single house in the middle of a field with a bunch of grass around it. You're and right. Now, and now it's for a, years. Yeah. And now it's a beautiful waterfront. Mm-hmm. And we're going to keep developing on that. We're going to make sure that it leaks into our downtown. So downtown gets some gets some love from that as well. So that the east side gets some love from that as well. You know, we're trying to make sure that we have a holistic approach when it comes to developing our city, but also making sure that the people that already live here continue to have the opportunity to live here by having equitable opportunities to gain affluence themselves. So what do you think about, about the taxes in the city of Bridgeport? I mean, do you think the taxes, from your point of view as a state rep, do you think the taxes are too high? I think there, there are definitely certain taxes that we need to look at. Mm-hmm. Uh, eliminating things like the car tax, I think, is an important thing. However, we need to figure out what our transportation plan overall is. I know that we tried for um, a couple of different approaches last year, mm-hmm. and none of them really went through. However, um, we need to stabilize transportation. Our special transportation fund isn't going to last forever. But as of right now, things like the gas tax are a regressive tax, especially on our middle class. And we need to make sure that they are that they are protected and they are, you know, taken care of. We need to make sure that we're not putting too many taxes on people who are, you know, who are not who are not as fortunate as the rest of us, who people who are scraping to get by. Mm. They don't need to be taxed at a higher rate than somebody who lives in Greenwich in a six million dollar house. Mm. Those you know, we need a we need a excise tax. Yeah. We need something that equitably taxes everybody because everybody needs to pay their fair share and make sure that, you know, people in Bridgeport are contributing at the same rate as people in Greenwich because right now Greenwich isn't doing that. Yes. So really quick, Antonio, I just want to uh, ask the people that are watching a quick question because I'm looking at the uh, the live feed and people um, on here are leaving comments, but I'm gonna we're gonna we're gonna acknowledge some of the comments that that are on here. But sure. But a few people mentioned that they're hearing static. Okay. And um, I'm hopefully the static is gone. Sometimes that happens, you know, and it's unfortunate because when you're live, uh, you don't you don't know what to expect. So sometimes we do have a little staticky situation. So if you're watching live right now, can you just verify whether you can hear me clearly or you still hear static so that we can troubleshoot it in between a commercial break? So if you're watching, just let me know right now in the comment line. It's good now. Thank you very, very much, Dawn. Thank you, my sister, Sonia, out there in Arizona who's watching. She's saying that it's clear right now. Thank you very much. So a couple of people are leaving comments out here. For example, there's someone out here named Vanessa De La Cruz. Oh, yeah. Uh Uh-huh. And she's saying, don't forget, my people, that this next election, we have to support our representatives and candidate Antonio Felipe. Your your vote, vote is very important. Yeah, Vanessa is somebody who has supported me from day one. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's she's uh, part of the Dominican coalition here in Bridgeport, uh, and as you know, me and Dennis Bradley are the two only two Dominicans elected mm-hmm. uh, to the legislature. So I'm so glad that she's watching. I'm glad that she's a uh, she's a part of all of the th- everything that I'm doing. 
I, I love her to death, so I'm, I'm glad she's here. Absolutely. And, and uh, there's a couple other comments on here. There's a gentleman named Gary Nelson Jr. who's watching, and he's saying, first time viewer checking in. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know, welcome. Welcome for uh, for tuning in, Gary. Um, such a such a great honor to be able to have you a part of what we have going on here. Yeah, I know Gary as well, and I'm glad he's here from Orchid Boys and Girls Club. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Excellent. And uh, so many other people. Let's see who. Oh, my my mom is watching way out there in Arizona. She's saying, oh, "Love you, son." There you go. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, man. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a quick commercial break. Okay. And uh, we'll we'll pick up where we left off at. All right. All right. All right, you guys. So thank you guys. Don't go anywhere. We're gonna take a commercial break. As you can see, we have Mr. Antonio Felipe here in the studio. Hopefully, you can hear me clearly now. Um, not really sure why we have static issues, but we're gonna figure it out. We'll be right back. Hi, welcome to ACES Bail Bonds. Do you need information regarding bail bonds and the bail bond process? Contact us at ACES Bail Bonds, where we are happy to give you a free bail consultation. You are in capable hands with our reputable agency. For fast, reliable bail bond service, get out of jail fast with ACES Bail Bonds. You can save time and money by calling ahead. We'll have the forms ready for you, with everything handled privately, discreetly, and confidentially at our office. For fast, reliable bail bond service, call ACES Bail Bonds now. Welcome to Ramirez Restaurant. All right, you guys, and welcome back to Live with Jason Rodriguez. We are here in the studio in the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut, and I have Mr. 130th District here on the hot seat, Antonio Felipe. So far, so good, right? Yeah. Yeah, man. So, Antonio, what I wanted to do is I wanted to mention to the people that are watching uh -huh. that if they want to reach out to you, first of all, they can visit right there. Yes. They can visit the website, which is www.houseofdems.org. House yeah, so... Um, if they want to reach out to you, they can uh, visit your website. Also, yes. there's a, a, a lot of information that's on there, a lot of links I'm for sorry, help. I'm sorry, I said that, that org, dot gov. Dot gov? Dot gov. Okay. Yep. <laughs> so, um, yep. So, if people want to get more information on you, if they want to reach out to you, they can visit the website. Yes. All your information is right there. Also, I'm going to put it up on the screen right now. There it is right there. Yes. Housedems.ct.gov backslash, back, back, blah, 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 backslash, Felipe, backslash, need help. Yes. Sounds about right? Yes, sir. All right. And also your email is right there on the screen. So yes. if you want to reach out to Antonio, um, you can reach out to him social media, Facebook, yeah. uh, Instagram, and also you can send him an email. Yeah, I uh, do respond. You do respond? I do respond. And, yes, that, do. and that's what's up. So, Antonio, with on the campaign trail right now, yeah. all right, um, do you need volunteers? Absolutely. Do you need support? Absolutely. Anybody who wants to volunteer, uh, reach out on my Facebook page my Antonio Felipe for State Rep Facebook page, my personal page, uh, reach out to me and, and we can come together and, and, you know, anything you need to clear up with me about the way that I've been serving, the things that I've been doing, I have no problem talking to you about it. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited about my candidacy. I'm very excited to go out there for another year of campaigning uh, to make sure that I keep the seat because I think it's critically important that young voices stay in the Capitol. And I think as the youngest member of color in the legislature, uh, I'm needed and I really want to go up there and fight for you. So if you want to help me in the fight, uh, reach out to my Facebook pages. You want to message me, I'll give you my number and we can chat that way. Uh, anything you, we need to do, let's get together and let's get it done because Bridgeport needs me and, and I'm always going to be here for Bridgeport. Excellent. So another question that just hit me, Antonio, is yeah. as you know, we're living in tough times. COVID-19, George Floyd, the movement. Mm -hmm. um, we've been having... A lot going on, man. Uh, you know, a lot of people are frustrated. Yeah. But anyhow, the point that I'm trying to make is parades are canceled. Yeah. Puerto Rican Day Parade. Oh. Not happening. Even, oh, though I, even though I want to mention to the viewing audience right now, this Saturday, yes. we're going to be having the Puerto Rican Day flag raising. Yes. The and flag there, and mm -hmm. there will be one float. 
there will be one float, a Census 2020 float, that's going around uh, the regular parade route to Central High School after the flag raising. So please, uh, if you wanna if you wanna see that, uh, come to uh, come to Central High School, and the, the float will be there. Yeah. So I know the flag raising is gonna be this Saturday, I believe at 11:30. If I'm not mistaken, was it 10:30? Uh, 11. 11 a.m. 11 a.m. All right, and that's gonna be at City Hall? At City Hall, 45 Lion Terrace. Okay, 45 Lion Terrace. So listen, come out, show your support. I mean, yeah, the, the, the parade is canceled, which really, really sucks. That's something yeah. that we all look forward to. And it's not only the Puerto Rican Day Parade, but pretty much all the parades are canceled. Um, fireworks. Yeah. I think that's gonna be taking place, I heard. Is that correct? I'm not sure. Um, I haven't really checked in on that. That's a municipal issue, that's, that's parks, but uh, I haven't been sure about the fireworks. I'm very skeptical about events like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I think when people come together for a protest or to promote the census or something like that, these are important issues. Mm -hmm. um, but when it comes to fireworks, it really depends on your comfortability. comfortability. Yeah. You know, if you, you want to go with your family and you feel comfortable around, uh, around what's going on with the virus and it's, and it's available to you, all for it. But yeah. I, I haven't been uh, keeping up with those fun activities as okay. much as I've been <laughs> keeping up with the uh, important issues. Gotcha. All right, so if you're just tuning in, again, that is Antonio Felipe. He's a state rep for, for the 130th district right here in the Bridgeport. city of Bridgeport, Connecticut. Actually, you're my state rep because I'm in your district. Yes. Right? Yes. So you better listen to what I got to say. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Antonio, yeah. for the people that are watching, your final words to them right now. Oh, well, uh, Felipe 2020 is here. This is, this is uh, my first full campaign. We ran a special election the first time around, and now uh, I'm running to earn your support. As the youngest member of the, of the delegation, as the youngest member of color in the entire legislature, it has been my honor to fight for equity the, entire, the entirety of the way. Equity in education, equity in jobs, uh, making sure that we're fighting for criminal justice. And I, I'm, I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about all the criminal justice issues that were going on before uh, COVID had happened, things like clean slate legislation and stopping solitary confinement. Right now, we are at a critical point for racial equity, and I wanna strike while the iron's hot. I wanna be there to help you, but I also wanna make sure that even though the iron's hot right now, that we keep it hot and we keep making sure that we're going forward because right now, we're gonna have a special session and we're gonna get solutions done. But that's not gonna be the end of it. We gotta get the ball rolling right now as hard as we can downhill to make sure that we're getting equitable solutions in all areas. And right now, uh, it's, it's a critical time. I think when we think about George Floyd, Jason Negron, all the people that we've lost as a community, Breonna Taylor, um, you know, we need to make sure that we're working hard for people like us, people like them, making sure that people of color are getting everything that they deserve um, going forward. Because until we're equal, it's not, it's not you know, we're not free the same way that everybody else is free. Equality is what matters. Absolutely. And my last question for you, how important is it for the citizens of the city of Bridgeport to come out and vote? Um, it's important to vote. It's important to fill out your census. It's important to do your civic duties because right now uh, people act like people of color don't count. And we don't come out to vote sometimes as much as other people do. Well, right now, this is the time to strike. This is the time to show that we are supporting each other and we are bringing a strong fight to our state capitals, um, to our presidency, especially come November, when we have that presidential showdown between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Right now, voting is critically important because it affects everything that's going on. And right now, it is a census year. So once the census is over, we're talking about uh, billions of federal dollars coming into the state of Connecticut. And what are we gonna do with them? So right now, um, it's critically important to exercise your right to vote and make sure it gets in the communities just like ours. Absolutely. With that said, Antonio, we're gonna take one more commercial break. All right. And then when we come back, I'm gonna hit you off with what I call shotgun questions. All right. All right. All right, you guys. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, we have Mr. 130th District of the City of Bridgeport, Antonio Felipe. We're gonna hit him off with what I call the shotgun questions. We'll be right back momentarily. Looking for custom wheels? Looking for quality and professional service? Do you need a flat tire repaired? Are you looking for a $45 alignment and the lowest prices in the state? Come to Perez Tire Center located in the city of Bridgeport. At Perez Tire Center, 
We take pride in our selection and service. We are never short on inventory, and we give you the best guaranteed lowest prices up front. At Perez Tire Center, we slash the competition and will beat the other guys. Financing is available and no credit check is needed. We also install batteries and tires on recreational vehicles, trailers, and motorcycles. If you need it, we got it. Perez Tire Center is open seven days per week, located at 72 Knowlton Street in the great city of Bridgeport, Connecticut. All right, you guys, and welcome back to Live with Jason Rodriguez. I'm your host, and we're here in the Super Elite Entertainment, Super Elite Entertainment Studio in the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut, and I have Mr. I call him Mr. 130th District. <laughs> State Rep Antonio Felipe here in the studio. Antonio, it's been a good time so yes, far, right? absolutely. You enjoyed Always yourself? Always a good time when I'm up here. All Always right. a good time. <laughs> All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm about to hit you off with what I call shotgun questions. All right. All right. Here we go. What's your favorite song? My favorite song, uh, This Woman's Work by Maxwell. I like that. I like that. That's a great song. Favorite movie? Favorite movie, Pulp Fiction. Or The Godfather. The Godfather. I, I think I lean, lean towards The Godfather myself. Okay. <laughs> Favorite food? Favorite food. Uh, only when my grandmother makes it. Uh-huh. Arroz, bistec, and tortone. Oof. How's the bistec made? Uh, she makes it. She makes a, a flat steak in a, in a pan with a lot of onions. Oh, nice. Nice. I might have to visit one of the local Spanish restaurants after we get down <laughs> here. <laughs> Your favorite well, sport? I heard baseball. Baseball all day. Okay. What team? New York Mets. New York Mets. It's, you know, it's been a hard, hard roll, had a hard ride for a couple of years. Uh, we had the 15 uh, World Series appearance, but I'm always going to ride for my team. Okay. I thought you were going to say Boston. Oh, no, no, no. We won't, won't go that far. I was going to shut down the, uh, the whole we'll interview and shut the studio down and say, you got to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's your favorite car? Um, honestly, just based on, based on memories that I've had uh -huh. in a car. I say a Honda Civic. Honda Civic. What? Yeah. Current so, one or the old school one? Old school one. Just just because I've had family members who have had who's had that car and just the memories that we made. So yeah, it's yeah. just it's just the nostalgia of it. Nice. Okay. Uh what is, what's the favorite thing you like to read? Favorite thing I like to read. Um, it's really it's really changed in the last couple of years. I used to like to to read um you know old novels, but now I like a lot of the historical stuff. Uh, like my father before me, um, a lot of the the history of our of our country is lost on some on some folks, mm -hmm. and me myself when I was younger. So learning more about that is important to me. Okay. Favorite thing you like to do? Favorite thing I like to do: write. Um, you know, not not in the political sense, like not writing briefs or uh -huh. or you know pilot programs or plans or anything like that. But uh, you know, creative writing. You know, sometimes write a story, a song, something like that. Just creatively getting getting your mind uh, free of some of the feelings that you got okay what's your favorite word my favorite word I don't know if I can say that on here um, oh you can <laughs> say it <laughs> no, no, we, no, we, we we have no restrictions here yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just saying <laughs> no no I'm kidding I'm kidding I'm kidding um, I'm not sure I'm not sure honestly I talk too much talk too much to have one favorite word you talk too much you said yeah I think I talk too much as well <laughs> I had quite a few people tell me that Especially on Thursdays when I do praying with music. They're like, stop yeah. talking so much and play the music video. That's why these interviews <laughs> go so well. You know, we, we both talk too much. Yeah. Um, what sound or noise do you like to hear the most? What sound or noise do I like to hear the most? You know, I think uh, the sound of like a steamy shower. I don't know why. That or, um, you know, like some rice s slowly boiling. Oh, Okay. It's peaceful to me. I don't know why. Interesting yeah. options, but okay. Yeah, Selections. Um, what's the favorite place you like to visit? You know, recently, uh, due to the pandemic and, and being locked down, Seaside Park. I love Seaside Park. It's the best park in Connecticut. It's right here in the district, and and I love going to Seaside Park, walking the entirety of it. It's a it's a great place to be. Absolutely, and that was I was just there. Um, yeah, uh, yesterday. Yeah, I was out there, rode my bike a few miles. 
around the park over and over yeah. again. Listen, a six mile ride from one end from one end to the other and back. Yeah. Yeah. I love doing that ride. And um, you know, you see me out there on my mountain bike, I got the thing loaded. I got rear view mirrors, <laughs> I got a bump and speaker on it. I keep it Puerto Rican ish. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Mine, mine's not pimped out yet, but but I, I ride my bike quite a few quite a few times over there. Yeah. So next question, other than your current profession, mm -hmm. if you was able to do it all over again, what would Antonio Felipe do? Um, I might want to be a writer. Um, maybe even for like television or or like screenplays, just creatively uh, trying to figure out how to tell stories. Because mm -hmm. right now, I think part of my job as a representative is not to to tell stories, but to hear and bring stories to the capital mm. and the more you do that the more experiences you're exposed to um the more creatively you can kind of create your own little worlds in your head if you try nice final question mm -hmm. if heaven really exists yeah when antonio felipe arrives at the pearly gates what do you want to hear god say to you when you arrive and get there i want god to say to me that bridgeport is a better place than when i arrived there and that i that i left it better than i found it honestly um, there's been a lot of talk from people about uh, my upbringing in Bridgeport and, and you know, wh what my story is. My story begins in Bridgeport and I hope it ends in Bridgeport. I want to make sure that I, I leave this place, uh, you know, whether it's, you know, up there to heaven or, or you know, if, if I go retire a couple towns away that, that I left it uh, better than I found it because right now, Bridgeport's in, in need of a lot of help, and I am dedicated to helping it. Excellent, and that's exactly what you're doing. And I, I've been seeing you on the campaign trail, and I've been seeing you um, working extremely hard, not only in the campaign trail, but throughout the year yeah. since you first got elected and you replaced Ezekiel uh, Santiago. Yeah, and uh, you've been doing an outstanding job, and you know I'm just anticipating what the outcome is going to be um, between you and Kelvin Ayala. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I'm anticipating what the outcome is going to be between Chris Rosario and Ethan Book. <laughs> you know, so we got two we got two big fights going on. Yeah, yeah. You know, two big well, fights well, going Ethan on. Ethan himself needs to get through a primary first. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll stay tuned on that one. Absolutely. Stay tuned. Absolutely. So really quick, I want to acknowledge some of the people that's watching again right now. I see Pertelis Morales is watching. Uh, Gary Nelson Jr. is saying, hopefully we can get him back over... For oh. Gary Nelson is saying, hopefully we can get him back over here for an open house next weekend to show our new upgrades in the facility. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Gary, message me. All right. So there you go, Gary. I mean, Antonio Felipe will be there. President Thomas Gaudet is saying static is gone. Thank you. And um, actually, thank you for tuning in. Do you know who Thomas Gaudet is? I do know who Thomas Gaudet is. I, I thank him for watching. He's a really good friend of mine. And thanks for tuning in, Tom. At exactly so with that said we have completed the interview man we're done with the show all right um you know i want to thank each and every one of you who, who tuned in tonight uh this is something we do each and every tuesday nights as yes, you already know every, every tuesdays at seven o'clock i'll be watching yeah we have an influential person from the state of connecticut here for example like mr antonio felipe if they're not here live with me yeah um on the hot seat we do it virtually where they're on a screen yeah. and you know it doesn't matter where you are you could be anywhere in the world and we could bring you onto the platform for an exclusive interview but antonio and i i know i already gave you this opportunity but your fear farewell to the viewing audience oh i just hope everybody's out there staying safe i hope everybody is uh really paying attention to the climate right now in terms of racial justice and doing something about it you know if you're if you're upset and something is bothering you, make sure that you get to one of these marches, one of these protests, and support some of the young people that are out here really doing it. Um, it's, it's really important. And make sure that on August 11th, you get out there and you vote, especially if you live in the 130th district. I would love your support. Honestly, as the youngest member of color in the legislature, I will keep saying that because uh, it's one of the things I am most proud of. I, I want to represent you in communities like ours because we have, we have not gotten a fair shake in a very long time. And Ezekiel Santiago before me was fighting so hard to make sure that we were turning that around. But it took him so long. And then he was gone uh, way before his time. And now uh, picking up the mantle, and I'm sorry, I'm gonna choke up a little bit. Uh, picking up the mantle from, from him and really making sure that some of his priorities get done as well as some of my own with the inequity that I've seen as a young person more recently. Um, it, it's very important. So get out and vote and support. Uh, because this is a, a long haul and I'm in it for the long haul. Excellent. 
Antonio, thank you so much of for course. coming down to the studio. I had a, a blast, man. Yeah, me too. And um, I hope you, you know, I hope you enjoyed yourself. Of course. And uh, people that are watching live right now on Facebook, and it sucks because we can't watch, you know, everyone else. I can't pay attention to all the other platforms. We have people watching on YouTube. We have people watching on Periscope and on, yeah. on uh, all the other different platforms we're on right now. And but we can see you guys who are watching live on Facebook, and some people are saying. For example, like Lissette Diaz, this was an interesting interview. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that, you know, a lot of people not only got, got information tonight, but they got some encouragement, some motivation, some inspiration from yeah. you, uh, a, a young Latino male from right here in the city of Bridgeport who is making a dent in the political industry. And, and you know, even though may, maybe sometimes you don't see it, but you're making an impact and you're changing lives each and every day. Yeah, and, and one more thing, mm -hmm. Lisette and anybody else who, who does think this is interesting, reach out to me. Um, you know, I'm on any of my social media platforms, if you message me, I can send you my number. I wanna make sure that, uh, that we are connecting with anybody from the community that wants to talk. I, I wanna represent you and I don't wanna do that in a insincere way. If you feel like I, I haven't had the opportunity to meet you, we haven't had the opportunity to talk, uh, please, let's create that opportunity and let's get together and let's get something done. Excellent. Antonio, thank you very much, brother, for coming down to the studio. God bless you, and I wish you nothing but success in the next couple of months. All right. Big fight between Antonio Felipe and Kelvin Ayala. Stay tuned, you guys, for the results that will be coming out in the next couple of months. Yes. Again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. As you already know, I'm your host of this show. This show is called Live with Jason Rodriguez. This is something we do each and every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. I bring um, an influential person here into the studio on our hot seat. Not necessarily always a politician. You could be a singer, you could be a writer, like Antonio Felipe likes writing, creative writing. Uh, you could be just someone that's out in the community, out in the state, somewhere around here, making a change, making a difference. And um, you know, I'm just gonna encourage you to visit our website at www.supereliteentertainment.com if you wanna be a guest on our show, if you know someone that should be featured on our show as well, go on to our website, send me their information, and I will reach out to them. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, if you're not following me or Super Elite Entertainment on Facebook or Instagram, I'm going to kindly ask you to go and subscribe to our YouTube channel and go and follow us on social media. Again, thank you guys so much for tuning in tonight. I'm your host, Jason Rodriguez, and we will be back here this Thursday night for what I call Praying With Music at 7 p.m. sharp. So tune in this Thursday night. God bless you guys. We'll see you next week and this Thursday. Thank you guys so much for tuning in.